Hey guys, have you ever noticed how amazing I am? I'm the only planet with life on it. Yeah, but I'm known as the Red Planet. That's pretty cool, right? Sorry to break it to you, Mars, but I'm the largest planet in the solar system. Size matters. Size may matter, but have you seen my rings? I'm like the Beyonce of the solar system. But I have the most diverse range of life, from tiny bacteria to huge whales. Speaking of life, I'm the only planet that humans have sent rovers to. I'm basically a celebrity. You may have rovers, but I have the great red spot. That's like a giant storm that's been raging for centuries. I have more moons than any other planet. I'm basically the ultimate party host. But I have the most beautiful views from space. You can see all sorts of amazing things, like the northern lights and the Great Barrier Reef. I have the largest mountain in the solar system. Take that, Earth. I have so many moons that some of them are practically many planets. Who needs one planet when you can have 79? And I have the most unique weather. With hexagonal clouds at my North Pole, I'm like the supermodel of planets. All right, all right, you all make good points, but can we all agree that we're all pretty great in our own ways? Yeah, I guess you're right. We all have our own unique quirks and features that make us amazing. And we all have something to offer to the universe. That's what makes us so special. <laughs> so let's not argue about who's the greatest. Let's just appreciate each other and all the amazing things we bring to the table. Agreed! Here's to being the four coolest planets in the solar system! <laughs> hey guys, have you heard about the space trash problem? Space trash? You mean like old satellites and rocket parts? Yeah, and all the other junk we humans have left floating around in space. I've seen some of that stuff. It's pretty nasty. Not to mention dangerous. All that debris can collide with spacecraft and cause serious damage. Plus, it's just plain ugly. It's not a good look for the solar system. So, what can we do about it? Can we clean it up? Well, we humans are already working on solutions to remove some of the larger debris, like using nets to capture objects or pushing them into the Earth's atmosphere where they'll burn up upon re-entry. That's just a drop in the bucket. There's still a ton of smaller pieces of debris that we need to deal with. Maybe we could get some robots to help out. They wouldn't have to worry about running out of oxygen or food like humans would. That's a good idea, Mercury! We could build a whole fleet of space robots to clean up the mess. And we could make it into a competition. Which planet's robots can collect the most space trash? I like that idea. It could be like the solar system's version of a scavenger hunt. <laughs> and once we've cleaned up all the debris, we can use it to make something useful. Maybe a giant space sculpture or something. Okay, now you're just getting silly. Hey, we've got to have a little fun with it, right? I agree. Let's turn this space trash problem into a fun and creative challenge for all of us. <laughs> hey, fellow planets! Have you ever taken a closer look at my magnificent moons? They're quite the stellar crew, if I say so myself. Oh, absolutely. Your moons are a sight to behold Saturn. Enceladus, for example, with its icy geysers, always gives me chills. I must admit, your moon Titan has always fascinated me. Its thick atmosphere and hydrocarbon lakes make it seem like an extraterrestrial vacation spot. And let's not forget about your moon Mimas Saturn. It's known for that enormous impact crater that makes it look like the Death Star from a certain movie franchise. Ah, Saturn, your moons are indeed intriguing. But have you seen my personal favorite, Iapetus? It's like a cosmic yin and yang, with one side dark as night and the other bright as day. Iapetus is truly captivating sun, but speaking of contrasts, what about Hyperion Saturn? Its irregular shape makes it look like it's been caught in a galactic blender. Haha, <laughs> you're right, Earth! Hyperion is quite the oddball. It's like the rebellious teenager of my moon family. Always spinning in its own unique way. 
Well, Saturn, it's safe to say your moons are a celestial gallery of wonders. They add an extra dash of excitement to our cosmic neighborhood. Thank you, my planetary pals. I'm proud to have such an extraordinary assortment of moons. Each one has its own charm and mystery, making me feel like the luckiest planet in the solar system. Cheers to that Saturn. Our moons make us shine even brighter. Here's to the beauty and diversity of our celestial companions. <laughs> hey planets, what's up? Not much, just trying to stay cool. It's pretty hot out here near you, sun. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, I know. I can get pretty intense sometimes. But that's just part of the adventure of the solar system, right? Speaking of adventure, what are we doing today? How about we explore the asteroid belt? I hear there are some pretty cool rocks out there. Sounds like a plan. But how are we going to get there? We can use my massive gravitational pull to slingshot around and gain enough momentum to make it out there. And I can use my rings to help protect us from any debris we might encounter along the way. And I'll use my unique tilt to help us navigate through the asteroids. Plus, my strong winds can help blow us in the right direction. And I'll, I'll just, I'll just be there for moral support. Ha ha, Pluto, you always crack me up. <laughs> but you're still an important part of our team. All right, let's blast off and explore the asteroid belt. This is so exciting. I can't wait to see all the different types of rocks and space debris out there. And I can use my rovers to take some cool photos and gather data on the asteroids. Whoa, whoa, we're really picking up speed now. <laughs> Hang on tight, everyone. Don't worry, my rings have got us covered. We'll make it through the asteroid belt in one piece. Wow, this is really exhilarating. I never knew exploring the solar system could be so much fun. And with all of us working together, we can accomplish anything we set our minds to. Yeah, we may be small, but we're still an important part of the solar system. That's the spirit team. Let's keep exploring and making amazing discoveries together. The adventure of the solar system never ends. <laughs> hey, fellow planets, how's everyone doing today? Oh, you know, just orbiting along. So, Earth, what's the latest gossip from the land of presidents? How's Biden handling things? Well, Biden's been busy making moves. He's been focusing on infrastructure and tackling climate change. It's like he's trying to build the ultimate Earth 2.0 expansion pack. Ah, uh, I can picture it now. Biden with a hard hat, laying bricks on the White House lawn. He's really taking building back better seriously. Speaking of building, what about Trump? Is he still building towers and tweeting up a storm? Oh, you bet. Trump is still making waves. He's like a solar flare of attention, always grabbing headlines with his rants and rallies. It's like he's trying to make the universe great again. I have a feeling he's gonna try to start a Trump Tower, Mars edition project soon. Can you imagine that? Red skyscrapers as far as the eye can see. Haha, ha, let's hope he doesn't take his real estate empire beyond our atmosphere. We don't need interplanetary property disputes. Well, at least the United States keeps things interesting. Politics down there always feels like a cosmic circus. You said it, Jupiter. It's like a never-ending reality TV show. Keeping up with the presidents, Coming soon to a galaxy near you. Ah, the drama and comedy of politics. Remember, Earth, we're always watching from afar. Just don't let it get too out of orbit. Thanks for the reminder, son. We'll try to keep our politicians in check. After all, it's our collective responsibility to keep the universe entertained. Absolutely. And hey, if things get too chaotic, I've got plenty of room for an earthly escape on my dusty red surface. Vacation destination, anyone? Count me in! A little break from political antics sounds like a cosmic dream. Let's plan a getaway! Sounds like a plan, fellow planets. We'll take a break from politics, bask in the sun's warmth, 
and enjoy the wonders of our universe. Remember, laughter is the best anti-gravity device. And so, the planets shared a light-hearted moment, reminding us that humor can bridge the gaps between worlds and bring joy to the cosmos. Hey, fellow celestial bodies! I've got a cosmic question for you. Who do you think is the dumbest planet of all? Well, I hate to say it, but I think Mercury takes the cake. It's so close to the sun, it must have melted its brain. Oh, come on Mars! Mercury may be small, but it's quick-witted. I'd say Uranus is the dumbest planet. Its name alone invites endless puns. Ha! Uranus does get a lot of laughs, but I think Venus takes the prize. It's like the planet that skipped science class and just decided to be all about beauty. Hey now, let's not be too hard on Venus. Beauty is its thing, and it rocks it. But speaking of skipping class, I think Neptune might be the space daydreamer. It's always lost in its own thoughts, swirling in its ethereal blue haze. Well, my fiery friends, as the brightest star in the system, I'm inclined to say that the title of dumbest doesn't quite fit any of us planets. We all have our quirks and unique characteristics. You're right, son. We're all special in our own way. We may have different strengths and weaknesses, but that's what makes our cosmic family so interesting. Indeed. Let's embrace our individualities and celebrate our diversity. After all, if we were all the same, the universe would be a pretty boring place. Absolutely. So, instead of determining who's the dumbest, let's focus on appreciating our cosmic differences and enjoying our interplanetary banter. Well said, Jupiter. Let's keep the laughter and quirky conversations flowing. We may be a little offbeat, but that's what makes us shine bright in the vastness of space.